Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> that that's my new opener. I'm just gonna Leroy Jenkins right into it. I love Leroy Jenkins. Oh, I no. want to meet that guy. I want to meet the guy who actually was Leroy. You Jenkins. just broke up for some reason. Weird. Did I? Anyway, yeah, you. It just broke up for a second. I don't know why. It may just be moving away from the mic hmm. or just something. You know how that goes. No, don't step on my keyboard. I got yeah, kittens on. I got kittens on the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I know, buddy. Onions, like I came to be with you. They were napping, but I guess he heard me talking and was like, "What are you doing?" Aww. Um, okay, today we're going to talk about the case of the Erickson twins. And it is literally just a couple of pages I slapped together because I had planned on doing a guest tonight and that didn't pan out. And so I was like, I better throw something together so we have an episode. Who was, was going to be the guest? Well, we were going to trade um, guests with the Cinetalks. So I was supposed to be a guest on theirs tonight and I was going oh, right. to yeah. get him to go ahead and record one with us because he picked out like a paranormal case he wanted to talk about from his hometown um and so i had the research for that ready but i don't want to do it without him so sure. i was like well okay i gotta slap something together so i was like Pull okay something out of your butt <laughs> yes so this is just slapped together i'm not even sure if it's going to make sense i copied and pasted from like three different pages <laughs> okay we'll make so it work we'll it may have some work yeah, it may have some repeat material in it or something. So, okay. we'll, we'll, yeah. But you don't remember hearing about this. It's some Swedish twins, twin girls, Ursula and um, Sabina. Do you hear about that anywhere? Where they run? There's a video of them running across traffic. Vaguely. Yeah. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna get you to watch the video later. I'm gonna just like okay. pause. I'm gonna pause the recording or something, and then I'm gonna let you um, watch the uh, video. Okay. In the middle, in the middle of this, because I just I want you to see the video too if you haven't already. Okay. Um, and I just refreshed my memory by watching it again myself because I'd seen it a long time ago, but. I had forgotten about it, and it just, I kind of, it popped up on my Facebook feed, something about, you know, one of those list site things right. um, had popped up something about it in my Facebook feed, and I was like, oh, I forgot about that story. That was a weird fucking story. I'm going to share that. Um, but basically, I'll go ahead and just read what I have from here and let everybody form their own opinions of this because it is fucking weird twins are said to share a bond that can defy scientific explanation everybody knows that somebody some say that the connection forged in the womb allows twins to feel each other's pain or communicate via esp for ursula and sabina erickson their bond took them on a bizarre trip one that involved attempted suicide superhuman strength reality tv and even murder the Swedish Ericsson twins made headlines in 2008 after a series of strange events took place in the UK. The truly bizarre story and its aftermath, aftermath has left authorities and physicians puzzled. What exactly happened that caused the twins to snap? Did they really experience a shared psychosis? Ultimately, the only people who can know what happened to the Eric sisters are Ursula and Sabina themselves, but their strange, strange case is darkly fascinating all the same. And I agree with that. It's fucking weird. The Erickson sisters' strange trip began in May of 2008 when Ursula, who had been living in the U.S. at the time, decided to visit her twin sister, Sabina, in County Cork, Ireland. Within 24 hours of her arrival, the two took a ferry to Liverpool. Upon arriving in the English port city, the twins paid a visit to the St. Anne police station to report concerns over Sabina's children, who, um, whom she had left with her partner back in Ireland. From there, the Erickson sisters boarded a National Express coach to London, where their behavior would take a more erratic turn. Not long after the twins boarded the coach to London, Ursula and Sabina began acting strangely. Reportedly, the twins had refused to check their bags and be became enraged when the bus staff attempted to take them from them. The bus stopped at a service station on the M6 in Staffordshire, and the driver, who had been perturbed by their behavior, kicked the twins off. 
Sabina and Ursula now stranded started walking the M6 motorway. The road is not designed for pedestrians. I know other people probably have seen footage of this too. I have. And it's not a road for you to be crossing, okay? The M6. Is this the, is this the one with the two girls that run across mm -hmm. the highway and get hit by the 18-wheeler yes. or whatever? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember this. I don't think I it's an 18-wheeler. I don't think it's an 18-wheeler, okay. but they did get hit. Yeah. Um, they started walking the motorway and concerned motorists began to notify the police. After receiving calls about two women disrupting traffic and causing chaos on the M6, local authorities went to investigate the particular group of police that responded had a film crew in tow who were shooting a reality TV show called Motorway Cops, and with cameras in hand, they captured the bizarre events that unfolded. Expecting to arrive at a scene of multiple fatalities, police were surprised to see the two women unharmed. As officers tried to calm the twins, Ursula had suddenly darted into traffic where she was struck by a large truck. Her sister, Sabina, followed her and she was hit by a speeding sedan, somersaulting over the hood and windshield before landing in the third lane of traffic. Both women suffered multiple injuries. As Erickson's sisters lay on the asphalt of the M6, severely wounded from being struck by vehicle, Police and paramedics scrambled to their aid. Ursula's legs were crushed, leaving her immobilized, and Sabina was unconscious for 15 minutes. But as the emergency responders attempted to help the twins, they became resistant. Sabina began screaming, they're going to steal your organs, and telling paramedics, I recognize you, I know you're not real. Sabina suddenly displayed almost superhuman strength, rose to her feet, and punched a female patrol officer who attempted to restrain her. She then ran back into the middle of the motorway. Though it took several police officers and paramedics, she was subdued shortly after. The term folie à deux, I think that's how you pronounce that, I'm not even 100% sure, is used to describe a shared psychological disorder wherein two people typically related experience a shared delusion. It's an extremely rare clinical disorder and it is thought to be what may have occurred to the Erickson sisters that day on the M6? The twins were hospitalized in a mental facility following their apprehension, though doctors were unable to pinpoint the delusion or the reason why they continue, continually left into traffic. Ursula would spend three months in the psychiatric facility while Sabina would be released back into society after a short stay, a decision that proved catastrophically short-sighted. Just days after her arrest on May 8th, May 17, 2008, Sabina was released by authorities as she wandered the streets of Stoke-on-Trent. She encountered two men walking a dog and asked where she might find a bed and breakfast. Glenn Hollinshead, a 50-year-old licensed paramedic, invited her to stay in his home for the evening. And when they got there, um, he had a friend, Peter Malloy, that was also visiting. Erickson's behavior became increasingly bizarre. She offered the men cigarettes, but quickly snatched them from their mouths, claiming they were poison. And she routinely peered out the window as though she was on the lookout for someone. Malloy left his friend and his guest late that evening. The next day, Sabina, in a fit of unexplained rage, stabbed Holling's head five times with a butcher knife, killing Jesus. him. Jesus. So that's what he gets for offering this for crazy being bitch help. a place yeah. to stay. Yeah. <laughs> and she fucking murders him for no reason. After murdering him, she fled the scene and took a hammer from his home and was spotted on a road nearby, repeatedly hitting herself over the head with it. A passing Joshua Grattage, Grattage, a passing motorist stopped in an effort to help the clearly troubled woman. Erickson hit him on the head with a piece of roof tile and fled again on foot. Paramedics soon got involved and gave chase to the fugitive Sabina. It keeps screwing me up because, you know, my sister's name yeah. is Sabrina and, and the Sabina yeah. <laughs> fucking me up. It keeps fucking me up bad. Gave chase to her who attempted to flee by jumping off a 40-foot bridge onto the A50 motorway. Though she suffered numerous fractures, she survived and was arrested and charged with murder. Sabina was charged with the murder of Glenn Holland's head on September 11, 2008. Her trial began on the 1st. It was stalled due to difficulty obtaining her medical records from Sweden. She, Erickson pled guilty to manslaughter due to diminished responsibility. She never explained her actions and only responded to police questions with no comment. Sabina's defense team argued that she had suffered from that psychosis with her twin sister, causing her to have intense delusions during the committal of those crimes. 
The judge determined that she had low culpability for her crimes due to her diminished state, and she was only sentenced to five years in prison. Um, the family of Glenn Holland's head was unhappy with the outcome of Sabina's er Sabina Erickson's, Erickson's trial. Why, they wondered, had the woman been released from psychiatric care just two days after t trying to kill herself on the M6? Ursula reportedly went back to the U.S. after the incident, while Sabina was released on parole in 2011. You're breaking up. Oh. Well, that sucks. Um, can you hear me now? Yes. She was released on parole in 2011. It's believed she returned to Europe. However, her whereabouts are currently unknown. Hmm. As for exactly what happened that set off the bizarre chain of events for the, the Erickson twins, that remains a mystery. When asked for a possible explanation, the detective, um, Dave, Detective Superintendent Dave Garrett had this to say. The reason for the two events may never be truly known or understood, but the taking of Lynn's life was a violent and senseless act. So, wow. <laughs> You know? uh, well, my my first initial thought on that with the whole, I remember the video of the, the twins running into traffic and stuff being all crazy like. Um, my, my first initial thought was PCP is a hell of a drug or even, you know, LSD or some hallucinogenic. I could not find a toxicology report because I searched that out separately just to yeah. see if there was. I could not find a record of that, but. Every article states that they had no drug or alcohols in their system, so I assume that okay. they did do a toxicology on them. Okay. Unless well, yeah, it's that's what I was thinking. You know, it, it would have already left their system in like three days or whenever the sister got out and murdered. Um, so, yeah, I mean, even if it was drugs, it would have already been out of her system when she committed the murder. The thing, the weird thing about like Finland and, and Sweden and Norway and all of those Nordic countries is that. They don't give long sentences for murder. I think like 20 years is the max for a murder. That's bizarre to me because I don't want... I mean, yeah, there are, I guess, exceptions to the rule. Like, I feel like there's, you know, some cases where... Like, for instance, like, you know, the women that... Battered woman syndrome. Right. Where, sure. you know, she finally has enough and fucking takes his ass out. And that, I do believe they should still do time or get mental help or yeah, something I, but I, I do not I do not believe they deserve a full life in prison for that. Yeah. or death yeah. penalty or anything like that right no mm -hmm. I completely agree um but it's it's odd that they it, those countries don't have death penalty at all that I'm aware of and I think max term is 20 years for murder so if there's someone that you hate enough that you want to murder them and you're like 20 years old you'll be out by the time you're 40 you know it's I don't know I don't know that I agree with their judicial system over there for things as heinous as first degree murder yeah um I think I mean they're with the information that we have about this case, I did really don't think there's any other explanation except psychosis. Because, I mean, um, they had, but they had no history of mental illness prior to this. They I was going to ask that, too. Do they have a, you know, a, a mental illness history? Or had they been no. seeing therapists since they were kids or no. something? Mm -hmm. or it just no, none. None. They had no mental illness history prior to this. They don't have a criminal history either. It's quite bizarre. It really it is. It is a really bizarre case. Um, and some people even um, say MK Ultra. They were triggered, you know. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I believe in MK Ultra or not. No. I, I've I, not. I, um, I know people that really do believe in it, and that's fine. I don't got a problem with that. Um, but I do know that government, the government has been experimenting on people for throughout history so no absolutely you know, <laughs> like in the 60s there were me. tons of experiments going on yeah so it wouldn't surprise me but i i just i don't know so but that is that is one theory that people have is that they were you know one of those sleeper agents for yeah, MK experimented on like dr mingala grabbed him or something you know do all kinds of twin experiments so I suppose something like that is possible. Maybe not specifically MK Ultra, but something like that could be possible. But not 
not very likely. I mean, what are the odds that just some random twins from Sweden, you know, like, I don't know. Were they identical or paternal or fraternal? I bl- um, well, they they were both girls, so they're not, yeah, they were not fraternal. Uh, I wonder if they're identical twins, because identical twins mm-hmm. seem to have more of a connection, I think, than... I'll look that up right now. Because I didn't think to look at that. Let me see. Uh, yeah, they're identical. Identical. Okay. Yeah, they would have more of a connection then. Hmm. I don't know. That's a strange case. I'd completely forgotten about that. But yeah, yeah I it, it's the, odd. I, guess I, hadn't, I hadn't looked far into it, but I had seen the video a long time ago and knew the basics of the story, but I didn't yeah. really... The first time I saw the video, and then I just watched it again a second ago as I'm sitting here talking to you, I just finished watching it. It seriously looks like they're on drugs. I mean, it looks like a PC, you know, PCP induced. Well, you know, psychosis. New drugs do happen from time to time. Maybe it was something that was not on their radar at that, that time or something. That very because well I mean, they're. Be. I mean, yeah, even I back mean, then, you know, there was no testing for methamphetamines or anything like that. So it, 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 they could have been on meth. And meth actually, you can't test for. Well, back then you couldn't. I don't know about now, but you couldn't test for meth in people's system toxicology. It didn't show up on reports. So it could have been on on meth. Who knows? Because meth will make you do some crazy ass shit from what I've seen. Yeah. And I have the link to the video in our show notes with all the other links that I used for this episode. Um, so you can look for, look that up yourself and, and go see what you think. Cause, but I just think it's a very interesting case because, you know me, I like the, the behind the story kind of stuff really is what interests me about this whole genre of true crime and stuff. And the fact that I'm mentally ill myself makes me, um, I guess more intrigued by those kind of cases where the, like with the whole Cindy James one where we were, you know, couldn't figure out if she was, yeah, if she was that actually, she crazy. Yeah. if she was crazy or whether there was somebody really stalking her. I still, I think there was someone really stalking her. I really, really do. Possibly the husband. Yeah. Yeah. The I'm ex-husband. thinking, I'm thinking the ex-husband. I really am. But I guess those kind of cases really intrigue me because I want to know what really happened, what's going on in their brain and what, what were they really seeing? Cause you know, she screamed out, they're going to steal your organs. Like, see, whoa. again, and that makes me think, you know, meth, PCP, some kind of crazy ass drug induced psychosis going on. And there. they repeat, and they repeatedly asked for the cops to be called during this and altercation. That's and the, it was the cops, too. and it was the cops that they were talking to. Yeah. And they're telling people to call the cops, but they're, but they're telling the cops and the paramedics to call the cops. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm like, what were they seeing during all of this? You know, like what were, what, because I don't think they were seeing, seeing what was really going on. It's like a Doctor Who episode. <laughs> yeah, there's I like, know. Yeah. And it's like, I want, I want to piece it together. I want to know what they saw, you know. I would love to find more out about what, from their point of view, what I wish they could be interviewed of, now, you know, and be like, what the fuck? What were you seeing? Yeah. What made you do that? Yeah. So, I, I just, I don't know. I don't know what to think about. I'd like to know what our what our listeners, Bono. What do you think? (laughs) Just let (laughs) us know. (laughs) You know, it's a curious one. It really is. Yeah, I really do. And also, I want people. I have a whole list of case ideas that I pull from, but I would like to know what y'all want to hear us do. Like, what cases, paranormal or true crime? What What do you want us to cover? Like, we want to know. I prefer not to do, like, really, really super popular stuff like Jean Monnet and stuff right. like that. Because we've mentioned those in, up, in other episodes, but we haven't done a whole And episode. there are so many podcasts that are already yes. doing those yes. and delving deep into them. So, so I prefer uh, to stay away from the really, really popular ones. Right. And, and do deep dives on ones that aren't as popular. I agree. Yeah, the more obscure um, ones. Yeah. That deserve I, recognition, that deserve to be brought out, you know, more get more popularity. So if you if you come at us saying we want you to do, you know, John Bonet or Amityville, we're probably gonna roll our eyes and 
keep going. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've kind of already done John Monet, right? And well, yeah, in uh, the list, and we did yeah. Amityville in the uh, tourism, one. right? Right. Uh, but but those were just kind of lists. Those weren't a whole episode about those. So we would like your input. Go to our Facebook or email us or get, hit us up on any of the social media pages and tell us what what case do you want us to cover or cases. Give us whole give us your whole list of stuff you want to hear. I don't care, but I just want to know what types of cases that y'all are interested in hearing because we want to keep this going and keep our people happy, right? We uh. love to make you happy. We're here to serve. We're here to please you. Your your and, ears um, anyway, just your ears. <laughs> For now, anyway, yeah. the <laughs> I have two shout outs this week. Um, a true crime one called "A Few Bad Apples," and they're really short episodes. I binged all of them in like one day. Really good podcast. Um, and another podcast called "Gutting the Sacred Cow," which is a re- really interesting concept, guys. They take, um really popular movies like mainstream big hit super good movies and bring someone on that hates that movie oh that's fantastic i would love to listen to that one and they basically rip it apart like they have notes on the movie and like how they feel about it and stuff like that that's great and i I listened to a couple episodes i listened to like the they did force gump and they did. Um, it's very Roger done... Ebert of them because he never seemed to like anything. <laughs> <clears throat> um, and I, I did. I, what was the other one I listened to? Shit, I can't remember. But um, they also they did like Titanic and like you know all of those movies. And then they bring on a guest, and I'm like, yeah, I, super I, popular. I, I actually messaged the the. Um, one of the guys from that podcast and I was like please have me on because I want to do Breakfast Club it's not on your list right now like I looked through and it's not nobody's done that one yet I'm like please have me on so I can do Breakfast Club because I don't hate Breakfast Club I was about to say how are we friends if you don't like the Breakfast Club it's in my top 20 favorite it's it's definitely in my top 20 I'm I'm a huge I'm a huge Brat Pack fan but That's just not my favorite one. You're like, more I'm saying really... Elmo's Fire. No, 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 no. No? Okay. I don't really like that one that much either. Wow. Um, I think I've seen that one like once. But wow. no, I'm more. I'm a, definitely a Pretty in Pink girl. Or, Sixteen uh, Candles. Sixteen yeah. Candles, yeah. Those are my two fa- probably my two favorites out of all those Molly Ringwald movies. But, um, okay. But while I find, I enjoy Breakfast Club on some level. Like I still think that it's kind of overrated and in, in the. I genre. think it's cinematic genius. <laughs> I mean, we're gonna completely disagree on this. I love it. It's set in. I mean, the just the direction of it because it's all set in basically one room. You do the entire movie in one room. That's that's so great to me. The way that it it's so in depth and put together well and the writing is phenomenal and you have these different genres of a different class of kids and that's exactly how it was in high school you had the jock and the princess you know and the criminal and i i just i i don't know it feels like it was being that it was made during the time that i was actually in high school i guess i related to it big time and judd nelson was my huge crush of that era but like I said, I, I understand why people enjoy it, and I appreciate it on a cinematic level. But it's just not one of the more enjoyable ones that I watch over and over again. You know what I mean? But you do love John Hughes. I mean, you have oh, to love God. John Hughes. Yeah, yes. Okay. Oh God, yes. <laughs> he's like John, he's in my top three favorite directors and writers he's of probably, all time. He's probably he's probably in my top five. Yeah. Yeah. He's fantastic. Well, was fantastic. God rest his soul. He was great. Did he make a bad movie? Actually, I'm pretty sure he made he made like those Beethoven dog movies, which they weren't necessarily bad. Yeah, I think he did. But the, we'll just go ahead and say most of his movies were like the best movies. Sure. I mean, even I Home don't Alone, make them like that anymore. Alone, you know, Home Alone. We still watch Home Alone like every year at Christmas. Oh yeah, it's um, I mean, it's it's the Christmas movie to me. 
But anyway, that's pretty much it. We can wrap this one up. Everybody go look up the video for yourself and tell us on social media what you think. Yeah, and then go the watch a John Hughes movie to yep. laugh after. <laughs> yes. Go go cleanse your palate and watch some John Hughes and feel better about the universe for a few hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll catch you anyway. next time, guys. All right. Talk hard, everybody. Talk hard. <laughs>